Live from San Jose, California, it's The Cube at the Adaptive Flash Launch. Brought to you by Nimble Storage. Now here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Silicon Valley for the uh, Nimble Storage exclusive coverage of their product launch. I'm John Furrier with Silicon Angle. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal noise. My co-host, uh, David Floyer from wikibon.org. Our next guest is Ryan Miller, technology architect with Millie Min. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So you're up on stage uh, giving the testimonial. So uh, yeah, what was the main thing that got you attracted to, to the value proposition that you were talking about? Yeah, uh, so Nimble, uh, Providing the, the, both the performance and the cost, uh, uh, it's it's a huge thing for us to be able to do a lot with a little, and um, that that goes both in the in the framework that that they're providing uh, for IOPS and capacity, but also physical rack space, um, being able to consolidate our, our co-location facilities, things like that. Describe your role, and your your purview within your organization, and and so the folks that understand the context of that. Sure, so uh, within our group, we uh, develop software for uh, benefits administration, uh, 401k pension plan, uh, whatnot. And uh, so we develop the software that we host and manage internally. Uh, so we're responsible for, our, for everything from the SDLC that's involved there uh, with the infrastructure and, and everything about that. Um, we're implementing the Nimble to, to achieve a couple different uh, aspects. Historically, we've dealt with uh, data warehousing, uh, but also with uh, hypervisor uh, virtualization, um, file systems, things like that, where we've uh, slowly consolidated some things to it. But we also have uh, some legacy uh, storage uh, facilities that we need to, uh, again, uh, continue that consolidation. Effort. What was it? Go ahead, David. Yeah. So, uh, what, what was the uh, what was the business requirement that you had? What was the business uh, sure. function that you had that uh, you required? And what made you look at nimble storage or any other right. storage at that Yeah, time? initially we had, uh, like I said earlier, uh, there was a, a greenfield opportunity for a data warehouse type platform uh, that we needed a lot of throughput. We didn't exactly know what we needed performance wise. We knew there was a lot of capacity needs and um, you know the traditional method of, of how we deploy the, the, arc, you know, the, the storage was it's going to be very cumbersome, very expensive and um, uh, just not very efficient, and uh, so we we're looking for another opportunity to to leverage something more um, uh, modern, something a little bit more uh, space conscious and also conscious on the uh, the, uh, the cost of, of uh, deployment. Of deployment. Yeah. So you said data warehouses. Uh, right. Can you give a little sure. more detail about what you were trying to do there? So in our transactional databases, we we needed to get the data off onto another platform that we could report it on. Right. So we have a, an ETL process that was. Uh, extracting that data and loading it into another environment, manipulating it a lot, so a lot of input output, a lot of data churn, and finally present it into a reporting side database. Uh, we, we do that for all our environments, uh, de development test, pre-production, production, so we've got a lot of varying times of when we need that performance, but also um, a lot of that churn creates havoc on, on the traditional systems where we're just bottlenecked by uh, the, you know, the, the fiber channel type IOPS right. that uh, we were accustomed to. So, um, so that's that where was the 10 gig uh, came Yeah, 10 gig iSCSI was new yeah. for us. Uh, getting off the fiber channel uh, and, and, de and deploying all new networks for that, dedicated for it, and, and really being able to um, utilize that throughput. Uh, but at the network level, at the, the host level, and, and at the storage level all the way through, right? right. So, um, what was it about the Nimble storage that was particularly useful in this data warehouse CTL environment? Right. Um, I think the, the unpredictability initially of what our uh, I.O. requirements were, uh, Nimble was able to to extend the, uh, the ceiling, so to speak, to allow us to um, be more flexible in what we were um, uh, deploying the system for um, the the ability to have a lot of storage, but also have that uh, the uh, capacity for performance. Uh, that flash we were able to expand our, our flash capacity on it and, and upgrade the CPU uh, capability as well. Um, and in those 10 gig interfaces, all of that allowed. 
for the storage platform to no longer become or be bottleneck. the buffer or right. sorry, the uh, mm -hmm. um, bottleneck. So uh, that then allowed us to focus on our efforts to optimize the process, the uh, the software that we had, uh, and then the translations and whatnot. So storage, uh, what was it? Time to innocence, isn't it? If you're a storage storage person, sure. you're always the the cause of every problem. So you right, have to right, prove right, your right. innocence. So right. That came down significantly. Absolutely, it? and um, you know we're we're a smaller group uh, within our technology group itself, so we, we had to do everything, and and having yet another. Uh, technology platform that they needed dedicated resources um, or, or uh, duplicate resources so that you had a little bit of overlap was was another cost factor and, and with a nimble you really can just let go of the, that mindset and, and allow other people to to take advantage of their basic knowledge of networking and everything yeah. else and actually manage the platform as a whole. So from a business perspective, you've, you've eliminated uh, storage as one of the bottlenecks there. Yep. What impact does that have on the development teams themselves? I mean, you, you're, you're, you're doing this for a purpose, to develop stuff, get it out to your customers, right. or uh, get new services out to your consultants. What impact has it had on that ability to deliver stuff more quickly to your... Uh, sure. Um, it, it has allowed us to more rapidly expand our, our needs, whatever it may be. Um, troubleshooting, if we need copies of, of data, uh, we can do that very easily. Um, if we need to expand it or um, um, change the way that we're processing it so that allows the developers to um, optimize their, their logic a little bit better so that uh, we're no longer blaming the storage. We, we are allowed to, we, we can blame other things now. We can focus on optimizing that. So ultimately, we, you know, we found these other issues and we were able to optimize those and, and actually give reason and justification to, to optimize them and to, to spend time researching it and making those things better. Now we got a better product, right? And we're not focused on, you know, it could be a number of different issues. We don't know, even know where to start necessarily. Now we know it's not this, it's not that, and we can focus on these other things. So you've eliminated storage as right, uh, a reason in, in the development shop. Right. That's pretty good. Pretty good feeling, isn't it? Right, uh, no, absolutely. <laughs> and yeah. what, what about InfoSight? Uh, how does that help you at all? Uh, yeah, InfoSight's. Uh, I've I've been with uh, Nimble before it existed, and so I saw the evolution of it. Um, it they've continued to add more data to it than uh, than I could ever really imagine would be needed uh, initially. But now I understand why it's there, um, and and being able to see from the basics of here we are, here's the trajectory, this is what we're going to need to. Um, you know, we are actually touching capacity on our flash or not, uh, and, and those up upgrade type of needs. But also being able to compare the different types of workloads, seeing where we're optimizing our compression usage, uh, our data usage, where our uh, data protection isn't there, um, where it isn't meeting our SLAs, or whatever. Um, it's, it's a nice uh, single pane of glass to really see our systems along with others within the company um, to see how we compare uh, amongst them. Fantastic. Yeah. So if there's one feature that, that, that they were going to take away from you, from your nimble storage, uh, which is the one that you would hang on to and not allow them to take? Um, interesting. Um, you know, I've, I've leveraged the in-place upgrades quite a bit um, and, and looking forward to the 700 series. Um, being able to, to do that is, is, uh, is a very powerful feature, I think. But uh, ultimately, the the in the snapshots that are in, built within the platform um, that took away a burden completely, uh, especially with our data warehouse project. Being able to back up, you know, the terabytes upon terabytes of data, uh, get it off and, and, and manage that versus because it's a secondary set of data. Our primary data has already got the the right. traditional backup system currently still, and and uh, so it solved an issue where. Um, we no longer had to deal with a third party or anything. The backups are there, they're replicated off-site, and, and that's good. So that's, that's a really good feature that we need. Ryan, we got to go. I want to yeah. thank you for coming on and sharing your thoughts with us. But we'll give you the final word. Share with the folks out there. Um, they had a lot of customer success we had uh, Rod on earlier. So share with the, the folks out there in your own words, why is Nimble so great? Why are they doing so well from a product technology and, and company sure. standpoint? Uh, I, think, I think one of their main advantages is that they got to start from scratch. They got to really rethink uh, the way the hardware is utilized. Um, they're not backfilling and trying to deal with legacy. And uh, you got some really smart guys on the team. 
Um, everybody's very smart, and, and the way that they've leveraged it and optimized it, um, nobody else can do this. Uh, obviously, they've patented everything here, but. Uh, um, <laughs> and they've gone public. They, you know, exactly, <laughs> so. The, the rocket ship is in orbit. Exactly, so they, uh, they're doing it right, they thought it out right, and, and they're moving forward with it, and uh, taking into account all of the, uh, the different needs of our customers. So. Well, thanks for coming on, Dave and I love to hear from practitioners, people in the, in the trenches, actually implementing it, not the vendors, and their, and their story, sure. obviously validated. Thanks for coming, Cube. We'll be right back with our next guest here on the ground, live in Silicon Valley, for the Nimble Store's exclusive coverage of their new product launch. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>